Okay, my outstanding friends, it's Roger once again. We're going to go into your immune system today because that is it right there. That's your immune system. You say, oh, come on, Roger. How could it be? Well, it is. And what it does is you have layers of membranes. And this is a membrane. In between this membrane, is your fleshy stuff down here, your, your guts and your organs and so forth. And then the rest of your body is out here, blood and fluid and feces and all of the cytoplasm and all that. But in here is a zone that separates the vital flesh from the nasty stuff. This is it. The mucosa is, the, is it virtually skin. It's exactly like skin. And that skin is in your intestines, it coats your organs, it coats your body, it's everything. Now, right under that skin is this floppy collagen area, all these collagen bundles and springs and these little balls. And that's what anchors your flesh so that you can twist around and, or, and, and your, all of that mucosa s surrounds everything, but it, it will come back to where it's supposed to be because of these anchors, balls, and springs. Now, what are these dots? These are different bacteria. They live in these fluid-filled bags. They're called membrane-bound bacteria. You got yellow, you got purple, you got orange, you got blue, green, pink, yellow, all kinds of different colors. And what does it, the colors mean? They're different strains of bacteria. A bacteria has a specific exact job. It creates one exact molecule. And that molecule has one exact purpose, and they're normally enzymes and catalysts, which mean they do an unbelievable amount of work in, a, in, in less than a second. They, do, they break down millions of other particles, absolutely stunning chemistry. And each one of these bacteria creates, and there's 80,000 or so, where they say 20 to 80,000, I'll go with the 80,000 of these bacteria living in our body and they're different species so guess what you got invaders out here so what do these guys do they're living down here having a good time everything's happy they're partying like crazy and all of a sudden they say whoa 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 what's going on out here they say some covid guys coming they say whoa, what, what are you going to do about that i don't know I never saw covid before in my life so they say well something's not right squirt some stuff out there and they do this they squirt mucus all over the place out here. Yeah, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. And all the stuff goes on the mucus and it's supposed to get out so it can't get in. All right. So most of it goes. Now the stuff that does invade, these guys look at it close and they say, what is coming at us? What, what, what the hell is this? And they work out a chemistry in it and they say, oop, there's a vulnerable spot. Get this guy, two of these guys, three of these guys, one of these guys, and add all this stuff and get the chemistry together. Create a new program. Basically, that's what they're doing. That's all they're doing. They're looking and saying, well, where is this thing vulnerable? If we insert a little piece of thing here, it's going to kill it. Get all these guys together, create a new program, and I think it might create a new bacteria. Now, they say, they call them strains, they call them new, you know, the Delta, the whatever the new one is, Omicron or whatever it is. And those are different, literally different bacteria in my mind. They're not the exact same bacteria. They have, they have modified themselves, virtually evolved, to deal with this new invader. All right? But in the meantime, if you don't have the correct bacteria here living originally you you're, you're done you're going to get invaded so quick there's nothing you can do now what happens then with the with the the uh, covid what's happening is let's say this isn't here and this isn't here or this isn't here okay and all of this bacteria is missing it squiggles its way down through here and starts to go into these fluid-filled bags and take over. And then the fluid fills bags and no longer create this kind of bacteria. They've been taken over and they create... Hold on. I'm going to show you the bacteria they create. 
they create this bacteria. All right, and all of a sudden, what happens to that bacteria? That bacteria says, ooh, you know what I like to eat? I like to eat this brown stuff. So it starts nibbling away at that brown stuff. And guess what that brown stuff is? It's a spring. Let's just look at this as to what's happening. In comes the invader, which and it's got to squeak through here. So it's just breaking right through, and it gets it gets in here. Then it gets into this fluid-filled stuff, and this it could travel, and it could take over all of the ones that are not protected well enough. So it starts to invade, and they call that acute respiratory distress syndrome. And what is actually happening? Let's get rid of all of the components here. Hold on. Let me get a rag. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're back to being just a sterile environment. All right, let's think about what happens here. Okay, we're going to take the case where the guy's immunocompromised. So he has no real good bacteria that can fight. And the, the COVID's come in, and they just, just, they just take right over. They just go crazy. <laughs> no. So then they start living in here, and then they need to f eat. And I believe they eat the brown collagens so now what happens now these springs collapse because they're supposed to open these bags back up every time you that's what their job is to bring everything back to its original position and these are fibrous and i believe the kids are getting fire fibritic conditions as well a lot of people are getting fibritic conditions um and clogging up their arteries and so forth and that's what would happen these little buggers here would be broken and snapping and they're stiff this is floppy and gets kind of jello-y because it just flops around but the the brown stuff is tough all right and the balls are tough as hell they just they just don't go bad at all no What do we have to do about this bad bacteria? Somehow we have to get it out of here. Our, um, our system has to overwhelm this. And the only way it's going to overwhelm it is with another bacteria, which was our, our good bacteria. So we have to figure out the bacteria in the people that have overcome from COVID. Find out what's, what's, is, what's the difference in their bacteria than people that are dying from it. And they, they say, okay, this guy died, and here's the bacteria that are in him. This guy lived, and here's the bacteria in him. And you just cough up a couple of samples, that's all, basically. Or I don't know how they do it. Just dig me out of that side of it. But they, like I say, you compare the different bacteria. And you can, I, I'm sure you're going to figure out what, which ones are missing, because it's going to be a bacteria. I'm almost 100% sure of this now. <laughs> I've been really looking at this carefully. And now they call it the immunotherapy. And they're using it for everything now, cancer and everything. Because it is. It's an invasive process. Let me show you what happens to cancer. All right, this is the same thing. This is the same thing I showed you before. Before I showed you this was all the mucosa. And it, it all, they had all the different fluid-filled bags. Well, this guy found a way through. And once it breaks through the first layer, in the second layer, in the third layer, in, in us, there's literally hundreds of layers in every every uh, every single membrane that I have found. It, it, it's so unbelievably intricate. It's just incredible, and there is so many webs and tangles and twists and fibers. It's just amazing. However, this guy found a way through. Nibble, 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 stage one. Nibble, 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 stage two. And eventually, boom. Now you're into that layer that I said is your vital flesh. And then it just starts to feed off of that vital flesh because that, that's, that's very nutritious to this growth. And it's going to feed off of that unless you can kill it somehow. Now, how do you kill it? It's right there trying to kill it with radiation and chemotherapy and this and that. Well, your immune system will kill it. I believe your immune system, if it was beefed up enough with the right bacteria, it would overwhelm them and that would and you'd win. The problem is, is that they think the more you try to destroy this, and in the, in the process of destroying a lot of tissue that has good bacteria, it no longer is working. So they may kill that tumor for a while, 
but it, there's still all kind of invasive pathways. Now, if they kill a tumor and then immediately flush you with excellent quality probiotics, I think I think that may be um, something they should look at. And don't forget, the only issue is we don't know what lives where in the different chemistry of the body. You, in these membranes, and they're not going to be the same tissue, it isn't the same bacteria. These bacteria will live in like mammary glands, wherever, you know, you've got two of them and, and, and in mammary glands, they're going to have a certain type of bacteria living in there. And if it's bad, you're going to get breast cancer. Let's say I don't know if that's true or not, but let's every. Let me put it this way: every different type of body part in you, your lungs, your kidneys, your heart, your blood vessels, your neural pathways, your brain cells, even this blood cells, all the cells in your body, they have their own specific membranes. Even every cell has its own membrane, and they have a certain chemistry. And that specific chemistry is specific to that, like lymph nodes. And if your lymph nodes start to go, the whole train of them can go bad because there's no chemistry in that region. You need those kind of bugs being able to float around. So we need to know a guy that dies from lymph node cancer, what, is it, what bacteria is in there and what isn't in there. Sooner or later we're going to figure this out, but we have to look at what bacteria is reside in the the bad tissues versus the good tissues basically as simple as that as far as i can determine then at least we have a chart that says these are all what we normally see in bad tissue for bacteria this is all normally what we see in non-invaded tissues of the same type i would say that's a good starting point